Yes, Pawan. Okay. So today we'll see like uh, how to handle drop downs. Okay. So I'm already have created a drop down in this page. So we'll try to handle this particular drop down. So uh, there are something like uh, two kinds of drop downs. One is uh, selected with uh, select tag. Okay, something like you can see. So let's inspect and see. So one is with formed with the select tag. So this is is this one is a standard uh, drop down. Okay, you will have a select. Inside select, you will have option. Okay, so option is nothing but your uh, options present here. So what happens is like when you are using Selenium, there is a class called select class to handle these drop downs. Okay, but uh, with the protractor, you will not be having uh, such kind of uh, classes. So we have to handle it manually. So at the same time, we can also have a custom drop downs. Okay, so this particular drop down, if I click, it will open the sub menu, li, span, td, and a sub menu. Okay, but if we inspect, it is a button, not a select tag. Okay, okay. so what happens is like uh, when developer develops, he can develop either using a standard one or a customized one. So when you are handling with Selenium, you can handle this particular drop down, but not this drop down. So in such cases, we will be going for custom drop down uh, we will be using a uh, different methods okay we have to create our own methods okay. so in protractor we don't have anything to handle both of them so we have to create a class which will handle this kind of drop downs yeah. okay so before going there so have we discussed about uh, inner elements no right no problem. yeah okay. For example, uh, not inner HTML, it's something like, for example, consider like I am trying to find one element. Okay. I found this element. Okay. Now, if again I use dot element, okay, or dot of find element, what happens is like it will not try to find the element inside the page. Okay. This is the page level. So it will not find inside the page, but what it will do is it will try to find an element with whatever already selected. Okay. Something like this one. We will write a code, something like this element by dot ID. dot so now you will get one more option okay if you see here after element you can click that element or you can set the keys okay you can perform different operations in similar way you can find the element again so are you able to see uh, element and the element array finder and the uh, element dot all also will come okay okay i got it for now so if i use now something like y y for example, like uh, by dot uh, last name yy. Okay, so if I use this particular uh, method, what happens is like it will not find it in the page, but it will try to find it inside this element. Okay, similar way, if you see here, the yes, select uh, is the option up, tag we are finding in the same way. Yes, so now when we try to find the option. It will be trying to find inside this particular select. Okay. About these things, it is applicable to Selenium also? Yes, everything is applicable. See, uh, one thing you need to understand, Loka, it's something like the way we code, okay, that's what uh, differs from Selenium to Protractor. Okay. okay. The remaining concepts remain the same. Whatever we do here, we'll be doing in a different coding, but the same concept is applicable for there also. So if you are using Selenium, you will be writing like find driver dot find element and then by dot ID. Yes. Then again dot find element you will use. Okay. okay. So here also what you can do is here also you can write find element. Okay. It will also work fine. So but we will be using only the methods uh, 
created from the protractor. We will not be using any methods from the uh, web driver. Okay. Okay. So you understood the concept, right? What is inner element or nested element is? Yes. yes. Okay. Now we'll see something like this. Sanjay joined. He said, "Hey, or not?" Yeah. Hi, Pawan. Hi, Sanjay. Yeah, actually, and I'm, I'm staying in office. I have connected from mobile, so I, I will listen to what you are telling. Uh, but I will not be able to talk because I'm traveling now. Okay. Oh, it's okay. Anyway, I am recording it. Okay. Yeah. You can see the visual tomorrow. Yeah, I will. I will be on call. Okay. Sure. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were talking about an uh, inner element. Okay. So inner element is nothing but uh, element present inside a element. Consider like uh, there is a table. Okay. So table is the element, but you have a rows and uh, cells inside the table. Okay. So if I try to find this particular table, I can something like consider there is only one table in the page. We can find it using a double slash table or t body. If we use this particular tag with the x path, we will be able to find that particular table because table is created with a table tag. Okay, or you can use by tag name table. Okay, with this one, you will be able to find the table. So if after finding this one, normally we will perform operations something like a dot click or a dot send keys. Okay, similar way we can perform one more operation that is called element. Again, the same command we will try to use that element dot the element of by dot some locator and we will find the element. Now, when we use this element for the second time, what happens is it will not try to find the element inside the page, but it will try to find the element inside this particular already found element. Okay, first we found the table. Now we are trying to find a different element. Now it will try to find the second element inside the table. Okay. Now, so this is what we were discussing in terms of a drop down. Okay, so this is applicable for all the elements. So in Protractor, you do not have uh, any methods or classes to handle drop downs. Either it could be as a standard drop down created using a select tag or a non standard uh, drop down uh, created using um, a button or a list or span okay so whatever the drop down it is you have to write uh, your own method okay our own class to handle this particular drop down not only drop down you can see like uh, more and more of uh, customized web elements okay in such cases it will be helpful okay now uh, I'm opening a page <clears throat> which contains a, a select tag and uh, it creates a drop down. Okay, now so we you can perform certain operations in a drop down, something like uh, we can select option and we can get number of options present and we can see like whether the option is present or not in the drop down or uh, we can select that particular uh, drop down option uh, using different values like. Uh, we can use it uh, class name or visible text or uh, select by index or by uh, values something like that you can create it based on your application okay so this is not a standard uh, way of uh, writing it but it will be specific to every single application okay for example if uh, drop down is made up of select tag and options then we can use this method so if it is uh, made up of some other uh, tag name then you have to change the locators according to that particular drop down okay so before you see this kind of uh, before you create this kind of uh, drop downs or in something you just need to make sure that developer develops all the things in a same format like if he creates a drop down at one particular place using this select tag then you should ask that person to develop all the drop downs using select tag only okay then only you can perform this uh, particular operations. Otherwise, it will be like not that much helpful. Okay, now let's uh, try to find this uh, drop down. So it has so product drop down. We are trying to find it has like a class name of uh, CL COL iPhone LJ iPhone three. So which will not be a unique one, but we have ideas first. 
so we'll use the id okay so for finding a drop down which is created using the select tag we can use uh, xpath link double slash select and then attribute of id equal to the value present there so the value is first okay we can use this particular locator element of y dot x path so let's paste the locator so now we have this particular element now i want to click this element and i want to select some value from this particular drop down okay normally uh, when you are doing a manual testing how will you select a drop down is like you will click that particular uh, drop down option and then you will select some value from the uh, options okay similar to that we in selenium or in a protractor also we have to first click that particular uh, drop down and then we have to select the option select the option is nothing but again click the option so for example if i want to click uh, iphone by default it's selected with google now if i want to select iphone i have to use uh, either value or a text okay can i create something like so let me copy the same line of code and then paste it and i'll change the locator value so any doubt loka so far okay so sanjay you can ask doubts if you have any you can uh ask in the next class okay now now let me execute it i'm giving this 5 seconds of sleep uh, to check like whether it's selecting uh, really selecting the iphone or not okay tap on it for So make sure you are compiling is going on, and then start running. it's starting the selenium server and we are waiting for it it opens the browser what it okay now the browser got opened and uh, it's waiting for open the url <coughs> not sure like uh, why protractor nowadays takes little time on uh, opening the urls but it will open once the command is dispatched okay now it's opening the drop down so it was trying to find that one so it says like there was no uh, locator okay something like select then value of apple actually i have make a, made a mistake like we have to give like option not select okay we are trying aiming for this particular value right so i have given this as a select okay so let me rerun it it's opening the browser again this time it is faster it's opening the page click it so are you able to see the change uh, loka it got changed to iphone now okay 
the test is failed uh, ignore it so we have set like a default timeout 12 seconds if we set it to like 30 or let's make it like 60 seconds now it will pass so uh, are you able to see it loka it's something like it was selecting the iphone No, actually, we have given iPhone. Sorry, actually, we have given locator as Apple, but uh, the value we see is iPhone because the value of Apple is present along with iPhone. Okay. So now, shall we write the same kind of thing? Okay, every time. You pass these two uh, two lines of code like every time whenever you want to select a particular option. So will it be fair to write every time? No problem. Better to go for a method. Yes. So what we do is uh, we will create a method inside a particular class. Okay, because we were uh, organizing all the classes in a, for different different purposes. So we will create one more. Yeah. We have talked about this uh, inner element, right? Yes. Uh, we can use for this one, right? How do you use uh, this one, right? Dark click and uh, it's not possible, right? No, no, no. Actually, uh, we will see the next step that one only. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So we can create this in the method, but every time you have to uh, repeat it. So what we will do is we will move it into a class. Yeah. Okay. For example, I can make it like a drop down iPhone spec dot ts. Okay, so I'm going to copy this particular class. I'll just uh, I'll remove the methods. So shall we say something like uh, select option from drop down. It will make sense, right? So I'll remove this two, and I'll copy it. Copy these two lines of code into our drop down spec. Sorry, we shouldn't have created the spec. It is a library. Okay, I'm going to rename it. Either you can rename it to library, or you can just keep it as drop down. Okay. So now here you have to give me a drop down. Okay, so we are creating a new class called a dropdown in a file dropdown.ts. Okay, now in this particular class, we have created a method. Okay, it could be a static method or non static method based on your requirement. So inside this method, we are placing those two lines of code like first line is to click the dropdown and second line to click the option. Okay, now we should call this particular dropdown. Uh, performing operation. So let's import the drop down class and then perform like select option from drop down. So shall we execute this one and try? Open the page and opening the, the page now. So it selected iPhone. Okay. Now it gets closed after five seconds of slip. Okay. The test is passed now. Now, how many times we can write like uh, this way? Like uh, all the time, if we write, uh, if we call this particular method, we have hard coded the values in this particular method to select that particular drop down. Okay, so every time we cannot uh, make that particular thing. So what we can do is, shall we make it something like uh, two, uh, this method accepts two elements. One is the drop down and other one is option. option. Yeah. But element finder, right? Yes, element finder. So, come somewhere here. 
so we have to give a right name so shall we give like a drop down okay. and then drop down option not drop down option but option to select what the fun okay so let's copy this particular two lines of code and uh, let's go back to our spec file and paste it now what we can do is now we have to click the drop down first after that we have to click the option so for that also we have to click it for selecting the option okay so if i perform the operation will it work uh, loka so i have to pass these two elements to that particular uh, select option drop down method it will work okay let's try and we'll see it will and then putting it okay so i have uh, created a new line just to avoid that uh, lengthy line now let's try run it so sanjay what we are doing is like uh, we uh, so far we have created a method in that method we are trying to click the uh, drop down first and then we are trying to click that particular option okay so we thought like it's a uh, more of hard coded so let's make it like less hard coded so what we are doing is like we are passing those two elements okay in um, into the method that method does nothing but just two it will perform two clicks one is on drop down another one is on option okay now if we see it selected the iphone again okay so uh, this works fine all the time okay so no issues but but consider if there is one more drop down okay and which has the same option like iphone or the value as apple so what happens now will it select the first one or this one it will select first one i think yes so it will always try to select the first one so in case if we are trying to select value from the first drop down then it is fine because we are trying to select the first drop down and the protractor also selects the first one first occurrence but if we are performing the operation on the second drop down means then still protractor will try to perform the operation on the first drop down which is not expected one right so to avoid this particular uh, ambiguous situations or uh, the failure situation what we do is like instead of finding this element inside the page what we do is we'll try to find this element inside this particular element okay so what we have to do is like first we have to have this particular element and then we have to receive these elements and all right yes so for that purpose in the drop down i am going to create a constructor okay so you have to create using constructor itself and then you have to accept the parameter if you want to accept okay so in drop down not only we are going to select the values but also we will be performing different operation okay. so for that purpose what we do is we'll accept the drop down uh, of uh, element as input value for the constructor okay so we'll follow like drop down something like you can call it as yeah drop down is a drop down and then you have it should be like element finder finder up uh, over now uh, we need to do constructor or it, you know, we can you can use the class name also here uh, no you have to use the constructor only so the term uh, keyword constructor means for constructor in java you will be using the class name okay. but in typescript you have to use the constructor keyword okay okay so for example let's try to use the drop down so now also it's not throwing an error but 
i am not sure like i have not tried but as of now let's use construct also okay bro. okay yes, so at the end we'll try like what happens if we use drop down so it accepted the drop down value so now we have the element which is in the upper level okay now we want to find the lower elements so what we can do is we have to we have accepted in a constructor level okay. right so you have to take this particular uh, element sorry element or this particular value outside the constructor for that purpose we will be creating one more variable instance variable yes let something like actual drop down the sound okay so now we have uh, actual drop down now we have to assign it back here so how will be assign it this dot actual drop down equal to drop down so now what happens is like it will reassign the value okay so what we have in this actual drop down is first we have null but first we will be calling the constructor what it does is like it will assign the drop down element to actual drop down variable okay so now already we have a drop down do we need this drop down again and only for because it will be just a duplicate value so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this particular uh, drop down so whenever you want to use any value or uh, any instance value inside the method you have to use this keyword and then you have to write the variable name yeah for one example more static also right in the for method yes it could be static also no it's not required that anyway we are creating object right we are using constructor yes let's see like one minute so we are creating it inside the static method so that's why you are not able to access so let's remove the static method from it okay static keyword now it's a normal uh, instance method okay now we have uh, this actual drop down so uh, some days back we were discussing right to get all the options what we have to do we have to provide the data type here also it is element finder if we see now we will get all the method okay now we got the actual um what do you call we got the actual uh, uh, element and we are trying to click it but we are accepting the element again okay so if you want to find another inner element you should not be accepting a full uh, what do you call it uh we shouldn't be accepting the full element but you should accept the locator for example in selenium it, uh, we can select a drop down based on three options select by index okay based on the like it will start like 0 1 2 3 like that or based on the text google yahoo iphone bing or based on a value like google yahoo apple microsoft okay so based on these values we can select it so if you want to perform in a same way we can do it but if we want to perform uh, based on different values then we can perform based on different values values also something like class name you can use or ids you can use but as of now let's go with the standard okay so let's try to find it with text okay for example let me showcase if i have somewhere i'll can showcase it so let us see i have created this for a friend what they did is in cucumber somewhere okay so actually here we have uh we have we have opened a uh, selenium with java now i'm creating object for a select class is equal to it's waiting for the import so 
Yes. Yeah, phone. I have idea phone about the select class. Uh, you have, right? Yeah, I have idea. Okay, fine. Then. Because I want to showcase that uh, what are the values are present here. Yeah, Just it's a find that by visible test by value by index. I have added. Okay, fine. Okay, just for a moment, I click and create it. And yeah. So it will accept. Right. Find element. Right. ID. Okay. Um. Okay. Now we can use like. Or uh, deselect all, or uh, select by index, deselect by index, index, and uh, is multiple, notify, select by index, select by value, select by visible text. So let's try to create uh, this particular select by visible text. Okay. So I'm changing the method name to select underscore, sorry, by dot select by visible text okay now what we have to accept here is a string basically the text right so visible underscore text in the form of string okay i was able to accept it and uh, we already have a drop down as well so we have actual drop down but now we have to find an element using this particular visible text inside this particular actual drop down okay for that purpose we will be using this dot actual drop down dot element okay so now by dot we can write x path so when you are going with the x uh, visible text you have to use x path only so what could be the x path uh, loka uh, we need to go for option tab uh, Two yes, then option option uh, square bracket square bracket at the rate test is full. Uh, no need to square, you can remove. Okay, oh, we can, uh, we can do test method. Uh, okay, is equal to single okay. quotes. Who can go for the right one? Okay, so we have so far here now end it here and accept the parameter whatever the you have accepted use that one and again you end it okay now uh, will it create a, a right x path uh, on why you are uh, why you are going like double quotes okay i'll explain it okay for example when you are starting with a double quote okay so whatever single quote write you are right inside that particular span before uh, ending that particular double quote it will be considered as a string okay it will be part of a string only it will not be considered as a special character so similarly here also the same thing but i have ended it here because whatever you combine string plus anything okay equal to string String. Okay, so for that purpose, here I am adding this particular string along okay, with right. this particular string. Yes. Yeah. Okay, some people will use uh, dollar sign also, but uh, I'm more towards this plus sign itself because uh, if you want to pass integers also, you can pass it. Okay, it will make it into a string and then it will work. Okay. Okay. Now we are able to find this element. Now we have to click it. Right. Are you able to understand, Loka? So here, here, here we have one element we already found in our test file. Now we are trying to find another element inside the uh, the element we received from the test file. Okay, and then we are trying to click it. So this is the drop down, and this is the option. Okay, the second part is option. Now uh, let me run it, and we'll see like uh, whether it runs fine or not. Let's see. 
second select option from drop down is not a function okay fine we have not changed it here we have not changed it here right so because of which it's coming actually we have to change the test code so we have a drop down now we have to create a object uh, for example once i like uh, var drop down equal to drop down and we have to pass the element for first okay for the constructor Yes, we have to add new. Okay, now we have the constructor and we have passed our element. Now we should be able to call using this particular constructor object drp dot select visible text. Okay, so our visible text is always we should copy it from here. Okay, so for example, I'm copying Yahoo. Okay. Now let's rerun it and see. Let me rerun. We have five seconds of sleep there, so we'll be able to see like if the value is selected. Opening the page, it changed to Yahoo. Are we able to see right, uh, Loka? Okay. So it was able to change. So if we see uh, the select class, we have few more methods, which are like a deselect, deselect, and all uh, applicable for multiple selects. So we have uh, another options like get selected option or get first selected option and get option let's implement a get options okay we cannot uh, implement this get first selected option and get uh yeah get first selected option alone it will not be possible but get options is possible and uh, to check is multiple also possible and select by value select by index also possible okay so just uh, tell me guess loka so if you want to implement select by value how will you do it now we have created with select by visible text. Uh, here we'll just change the method on and uh, here uh, and we'll, we'll include one more method. We'll accept as a string mm -hmm. and uh, this option well option is called the value. We will put it right inside the option. We will put it the thing. But one more time, right. you just need to think like sometimes giving option is uh, not right way. Just you need to put a star. And sometimes you don't okay so why i'm putting star is like uh, i'm going to give an assignment on a web table okay you guys try okay. so in that purpose or in that case you might need to use a star okay in certain places or you can use option also that is also a good thing but uh, you can use it both of them okay. now let's get all the options so when you retrieve something what a protractor retrieves retrieves Sorry, returns. Like when you try to fetch some value from protractor, what it returns? It will return a promise. Yes. So in a similar way, you also should return a promise. Okay. So do we need uh, do we need to accept anything? Uh, no need. Yes. No need to accept anything. So what we need to do now? Okay. So the trick is uh, nothing but we should be able to find all of these options, right? Yes. So what will you do if you want to find all the options or all the elements which are matching? If you want to find all of them, what will you do? I will go for elements.all. Okay. Shall we go now? Element dot all. So you are using element dot all. Now by dot, you have to use something. Okay. But shall we use this particular drop down first and then shall we use this one? Because it will find only from this particular drop down. 
Okay. Shall we use element? Mm -mm. Okay. Element dot all is not present, so we can use still we can we can use find elements. Okay. It will find all the elements. Now we have to pass by dot. So we do we need to pass anything? No need to pass anyway. We are already passing this actual graph. Yes, but still we want to find all the elements, right? So yeah. we have to pass uh, something like a tag name or something, right? Absolutely. So now what we have to do is like, do we need to resolve it or just we need to return it? So, yes, if you resolve it also, it will again, it will be inside a promise only. Okay. So it's always better to return a promise itself. Now this will return a promise and we are returning the same thing back. Okay. Now let's go to here and uh, try to write DRP. For example, I'm commenting this particular selecting Yahoo. DRP dot get options. Okay. Dot then we have to resolve the promise. And then you can do anything. Okay. Something like values. I'm creating one variable and I'm going to print this values. Console dot log. Log. Okay, so here I'm trying to print the values. Let's see whether uh, we'll be able to print it or not. So any doubt on this method? Uh, no, no doubt, right? We are, what we are doing is like, we are trying to simply find all the elements, okay, which matches a particular X path or any locator inside a, another element. Okay, and here another element is nothing but your drop down. Okay, so it says like uh, this is not function. So I guess it will, it's not working. So we can use all directly actually. Okay. okay. Even I'm not sure like uh, we have to go with this particular method, but let's try. If not this, if something else. If not something else, we'll find out a way. So always you should try for a different, different ways. If this is not working, we shouldn't be ending up like it's not working. We should go for some other way. It returned something. It returned total of high. Yes, it seems so. It returned total promise. Okay. So now what we can do is Instead of uh, returning, let's try to print it here itself. Oh, actually, uh, that is also right only. Actually, we have to, what we have to return is get text. Right? If you want to get the text. So now let's return it. Print the value dot get text if you want. I didn't get you. Uh, from the promise, uh, you cannot get text. Oh. Here you are talking, right? In the test method. Yes, 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 yes. You can get it, but uh, you need to remember this particular uh, thing. Uh, look up when you are creating a class or a method or something. Give the as minimum as possible load to a user. Okay, okay. Okay, as you asked. You just uh, remove it and you can write it here. If this is what you are asking, right? I yeah. So I can give it. Okay. Let's run it. Let's run this one. We'll see like what uh, what is the thing is going to happen.
So is it uh, returning Google, Yahoo, and iPhone ping? Yes. I can say it. Now, let me move with this particular part, okay? To here. Okay, I'm changing it. So now uh, let me rerun it. So is it printing? Yes, sir. So, which one is better? Just, uh, just because I wrote it, don't say it. Okay, just think all the scenarios and then tell. Uh, anyway, it is better to go for test because again the users if who, are, who are using the method, right? Again, they need to go for get text method. So that we can directly print the test, it is better. Even few moments back, I was thinking the same way. We should give less burden to the user. That is one thing. Okay, so as for that, we should go for like uh, getting the text inside this drop down class. Okay, but what if the user is not interested at all in the get text? Uh -huh. He is only interested in the get attribute. But oh. that uh, maybe. So now that is again it is better to go for. So yeah, now he wants in the get attribute. Tomorrow he wants for some other thing like get CSS value. Yeah. Right. So let's give the option to this guy itself. Okay, mm -hmm. but when we should give less burden is like if this one is going to return something only a specific thing that time we have to use that particular method. Okay, okay. so some people will uh, design that way also get text or get attribute everything you will uh, they will send it here itself. Okay, uh, was, <laughs> we need to create more three more methods again. Yes, so just think. Uh, just you need to think like which one is going to be a user friendly one okay so simple one is going to be the user user friendly one all the times but uh, sometimes we might need to think like do we need to do this one or we do we need to give the option to the user okay so okay. that is one of the thing we need to think so now it's always better to give the uh, control to user so that not only this get attributes or something you want to select the third option for example, you want to see something like a particular value is that particular uh, a particular value is equal to some option and then you want to click it. So in that case also, it, this one will be useful. If we get get text or something, okay, then it will be issue. So let the guy to decide like where he wants to get it. Like here you get the text and then you can do what you can do whatever you want. Okay. okay. Something like values of again you can use something like zero dot zero. then you can give the all the options okay anyway now, you can go for if loop that is better right now. Uh, right so you not if loop if condition okay ah, sorry, if, sorry, if, sorry, sorry. if condition okay so in similar way you have to create now for example if you want to get all the text you can use like a dot text or you can get web element okay if you want to access the elements you can use this way and again you can go for value dot. you can use like what do you call get text or whatever okay now sometimes you will not get options because like as i i was, I was explaining to you right so because of that reason you will not get so but if you put zero or something here it will work fine so if you want to compare a particular value, then you have to go with for loop. Okay. Then okay. you use if condition and then you can select it. Okay. okay. So that is with this method. So as of now, I'm just printing the value. Okay. So I was able to print this value. Now, what else we can do with the dropdown?
okay so now let's see like i try like a long back but uh, let's see if you want to get the current selected option okay what you have to do is you have to execute a javascript query okay something like get selected option okay now you have to execute a javascript and uh, we should be something like let's try to execute it in this one Not there. So what we can do is execute return. Yes, return browser dot execute script. And then before you write any value, what you need to do, you need to execute in the console first, and then you have to execute. You have to put that particular script into your code. Okay. So without that one, don't do it. Document. Get element by ID. We have ID. We can use ID itself today. Let's see. So we are able to re uh, retry this particular button. Okay. Now get the value. Okay. Let's see what it returns. It's not returning any value. Okay. So it's in this case, I didn't get you. It is inside up value with inside the option tag, right? Yes, inside the option, not that value. I wanted to select get this okay. Google out of it. Okay. 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 So sometimes what happens is like when you use dot uh, value, it will return it, but sometimes it may not. Okay. So in that case, just you need to expand this one. Okay. So you can see the triangle here and see like uh, is there any option we can use for it? we don't have any so let's try to use jquery okay the id is hash if you remember and then paste it now we are able to get one element let's see it's one element only so we are able to get that particular element so just remove it and see like what are the values it is providing Okay, so it's pointing a button. Okay, just give me a moment. Okay. So we have to see any attribute which gives the particular value that go good. No, actually, oh, on. Uh, so we are having one more button here, so which is a different one. So for example, so this doesn't work. So we have to use a different thing. Okay. For example, different locator. So here we have a first. So shall we use this uh, query selector? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was finding some other one. So here there is an now bar. So it's it trying to find it. From there, document dot. It will be like um, okay, not a document. Let's use jQuery itself. jQuery is far better. So the first is select hash first. Now let's try. So we are able to get one particular element. Okay. Now from this one, let's retrieve value. So the value is undefined. So we cannot get the value. Let's try it with get ATTR value. So this is also not an attribute. Just try it. ATTR. Okay. So this is not defined. So fine. I'm just trying to get that particular part. Query selector. Query selector. Select hash first. So we are able to get this select drop down. Now we should be able to get the values. Not values, the selected value. So 
here if you can see we are able to get the value google right so when you are using the javascript now if i execute what it does is like it will find the value okay and it will not return the value okay it will find it but it will not return it so for that purpose what you have to write is write a written keyword before the document along with your uh, javascript okay now it will return a promise only okay now just go here and try to get that particular drop down drp dot get selected option dot it returns uh, promise now we have to handle it then function so the function is going to contain like uh, selected value okay it's going to contain that particular value which got selected console dot log and then we are trying to print that selected value let's try to run it we should get google but before that let me select yahoo okay now it should print yahoo yeah. okay here are you able to see yahoo here okay it got printed after google yahoo and iphone printed first because we are getting the options now it printed yahoo okay so uh, just guess look uh, why we are not asking the user that uh, any value or jquery here yeah anyway we are already given the value there right in the message right so because of which we will be using you know why it is because like we are going to get the text only that is our main purpose so we are not accepting any jquery here directly we are writing in the drop down okay so, so any queries on this one uh, loka so far uh, no problem it's fine so now let me open one more okay so i have one more thing called custom table a table means it is like calendar form not calendar normal table okay okay got it element somewhere here you should be a custom web table okay so this is one one of the custom web table okay it will change its position but still uh, you guys will be able to do it you should be able to do it okay Answer. This is the table now. Okay. okay. Let's see the source code of this table and just try to guess like what could be the thing. So here you have. Okay. Let me make it bigger so that it will be visible for you guys. So now here you have table here. and then t body tr okay first tr and then inside tr you will have ths okay similar form it will be for first row tr means table row okay inside the table row you will have table data which is cell okay now everything in this particular table follows a particular pattern okay first you will have a tr and then you will have a td td okay tr and td okay okay now if i want to get all the values from this particular uh, you know what you call that 
field like search engine social media future technology okay how will you get it i can go for star and you can go with the tr yes tr you will get the row uh, then after that i will select the so first thing you need to remember is like how we are going to fetch it so do we have any common things between all of them okay so everything this particular data means like it is a td just you need to see like from the tr what is the distance like 1 2 3, 3. okay so the social media is also in the three distance and the future technology is also three distance right now yes. can i put like uh, after once i accept the table consider like now you have to create one class and which accepts a table table okay now inside this one you have to find dot all and then by dot xpath double slash double slash star td of 3 will it find all the third field this one search in in social media future technologies yes yes you are back and right yeah i am back <laughs> so you will be able to find it so so we are able to get this one okay now how will you fetch this particular first row alone like this particular row along with this uh, tr of 1 uh, okay tr of 1 is always your header okay okay so, so it will be i as one uh, two then okay now this is the confusion you will get so yeah. now you got the confusion you will write in a some way okay so while writing you thought like yeah it's fine and you are writing it like the first one and second one but when other person uses how will you make sure that it accepts from zero or it accepts from one only so basically if you point this one as a zero and you should point this one as a one right yes or if user completely ignores the header and if he also thinks like tr1 so how are how will you handle it like as you explained even i think the uh, tr first should be going to the first uh, row okay whole thing it will go to the uh, th okay no one thinks but how will you make sure that when he gives first one it comes here only as per xpath it goes to the first one first matches header so how will you make come make it to come here for the second row uh, why while uh, while giving we can give plus one yes so that is one thing you know user can pass something okay so normally everyone will think like this the starting point but internally you should be knowing that even though user thinks this way but actual should be a different one right correct so consider like if i want to fetch a value from uh, third row and uh, third column how will you do it basically i mean like uh, the third row is this one the chatchatic row and the third column this one okay as per me it is like 1 2 3 third row and columns is like 1 2 3 how will you do it if i want to fetch this feature technologies it will be tr of 4 slash td of 3 One minute. Tr of four. Okay. Tr of four. Tr of three. Okay. Absolutely, we will get the future technology. Now the requirement comes like wherever there is a Facebook. Okay. Mm -hmm. Facebook dot com. I want to click the check box. First, uh, we should take the uh, number of rows which is there. then uh, uh, number of uh, columns like uh, we will get tr dot okay uh, uh, okay now uh, consider sanjay i am yeah. refreshing this page now facebook in the second position mm -hmm. now it is in the first position so will your xpath will work will uh, do you think that xpath works 
no no uh, no after that uh, i'll have a for loop outer for loop will be for rows mm mm-hmm. and inner for loop will be for uh, column okay huh? so then uh, it will be tr of uh, outer for loop say i mm mm-hmm. Slash uh, tr td of uh, j. Okay. Then uh, I will first. Uh, then I will do get text. Okay. Then if the text is equal, to, I am telling from Selenium point of view. No, no, we can tell it in any point of view. Like in the, most of the languages, will be yeah. the same. Yeah. And then uh, if the Facebook, if it is equal to Facebook mm-hmm. uh, text, then uh, uh, the row will remain same. Mm-hmm. Uh, slash td of one. okay dot click okay so if you want to do it in other way how will you do it shall we use a uh, x path called a uh, dependent and independent x path yeah uh, we can use uh, okay uh, but for that uh, first we need to find out where facebook is that right. right remember we right so can i put double slash star mm-hmm. text actually that is one of the approach uh, sanjay okay. so the simplest approach is manipulate with x path when you are having a different uh, elements something like a custom element okay always try to manipulate them with either with css or with the x path okay okay don't give much uh, pressure on the programming language okay okay so one thing you need to remember no actually why i am telling is like uh-huh. it will be a good way actually right yeah. okay now one more thing you guys need to remember is like when there is a table all the cells in that particular table belongs to a row now consider like selenium web driver and this checkbox and this automation testing is going to belong to a one tr okay okay this first one belongs to a separate tr okay now we can use the relative x path like if i put slash dot dot it will we will get the total row okay inside this row only we have our check box right okay slash td of 1 like slash td of 1 td of 1 you will get the td but not the check box okay. right yeah can i put double slash input okay so i am just uh, skipping the td because uh, none of the other tds has input okay we are sure right only this particular has td sorry the input box input. but this case is valid only when there is only one input tag consider like there is there is one more row and which has text bar okay in that case it will fail so in such case what you have to do is again you have to add this at type Equal to check box, mm. right? Yeah. So similar way, you have to make it unique way. Okay. So when user either wants in this way or that way, you should be able to manipulate with your X path. Okay. So this is going to be our assignment, guys. Today we have seen this uh, select one. Okay. So for a moment's sake, I'm just. no actually uh, you guys try to type it don't copy it okay anyway uh, this video will be present there so anyway uh, tomorrow on day after tomorrow you guys in off only so what you guys do is how will you handle this particular table web table same as this drop down okay what are the things if you guys are the developers or if you are the, you are the person who is going to give the requirement then think about from that perspective and write a few methods okay Okay. so uh, what i would expect is like you should use css and xpath both of them combination okay and a remaining method so i am expecting almost like a 5 to 6 uh, days class of things to cover in this particular assignment okay yeah what, what is uh, i mean uh, what is it we need to do exactly you do only one thing uh, the thing is like how will you handle this web table okay okay so it is something like you are the client think like you are the client mm-hmm. 
and you want certain methods okay from that perspective you try to write it okay, okay. so if you don't get uh, like what are the methods to write you can visit the same page okay but don't see the code okay, okay. so here i have given certain methods okay mm -hmm. try to implement them using uh, whatever so far we have learned okay but if you are if you want to learn uh, something like just after writing it if you want to make sure you can go down and you can see the code code is also present but uh, i want you guys to try it okay don't see the code you guys can try okay okay so because it will cover uh, most of our uh, classes and you will get little bit of doubts in this one that's why i was asking okay okay so that's all for today so any other queries guys today like in the slack drop down so sanjay you join late uh, do you wish to stay late means uh, 10 more minutes i can stay um, no for i will go to it and i will get back okay sure so i'll upload it uh, Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, please. Actually, I have uploaded. So yesterday's class is uh, pending, and uh, this one is pending. Okay. By tomorrow, ten or somewhere, you will get it. Okay. 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 The same page. Uh, you guys have the page link, right? Yes. I uh, we sent it on WhatsApp. Yes, yes. The old one only. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys. Then have a good weekend. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Bye. Thank you.